starting back in November of 2010. We have hosted since that time 24 uh, of the largest events that most cities in America have ever hosted. And we did it um, with, our, I would say, great grace and dignity um, and in partnership with the 78,000 people that work in the hospitality industry in and around uh, the city of New Orleans. It wouldn't be possible without these leaders behind me. So I want to recognize uh, Dr. John Williams, who's the director of the Kavikoff School of Hotel Restaurants uh, and Tourism Administration, who will speak about uh, the study and the empirical data that will back up what it is that we talk to you about today. Of course, to my dear friend and, and colleague, Steve Perry, who's the president and CEO uh, of the New Orleans Convention and Visitors Bureau. Uh, we have some business leaders that if not here, they'll be joining us, but Greg Rusevich and Daryl Berger and Tony Rice, uh, each uh, in their own respective capacities, have been incredible leaders. If the car met, uh, who is uh, in the midst of running uh, one of the great transformations of the beautiful airport that we see, uh, Stan Harris, who's the president and CEO of the Restaurant Association, Melvin Rodriguez, my good buddy, uh, who has been the chairman not only of the Restaurant Association, but also of uh, the Convention and Business Bureau, I mean, I'm sorry, the Convention Center, uh, which has been a great partner, Mavis Earl and Jay Cicero, uh, Quint Davis, uh, frontline employees from the tourism industry who have joined us, uh, and other dignitaries that have just been so incredible. We have had, uh, in 2012, a bad a year. Uh, of course, everything that we do, uh, both from the government side, the not-for-profit side, the private sector side, is designed to provide good-paying jobs uh, and a wonderful livelihood for the people of the city of New Orleans. And of course, the tourism industry uh, has done a spectacular job in hitting every one of those marks. In 2012, uh, it was unprecedented for many different reasons. First of all, uh, for the first time, I believe, in our history, uh, we won the 2012 World Tourism Award. Now, I want to take a moment just to, just to say that again, the World Tourism Award. Now, New Orleans is oftentimes pitted against uh, folks in the south, the southern average, and then the national average, and then the international. This was the world award. We were recognized by colleagues from around the globe for the work that we have done, and that is just incredible. So when we say that the city of New Orleans punches higher than their weight for our size and our strength, that is really wonderful proof that we've been recognized by the best of the best. And I really want to thank everybody for their hard work. We were also rated America's favorite city by Travel and Leisure Magazine. Now these are the folks that really know. The results from the UNO Hospitality Research Center, which uh, Dr. Williams will go over you know, in a little bit in more detail, indicates that we had 9.1 million visitors in 2012. That's 350,000 more than we had in 2011. And this year, in terms of total spend, it is the most amount of money spent in tourism in the history of the city of New Orleans. The actual numbers are not exactly the highest, but in terms of spend, which means that we're getting a much greater value for the amount of work that we have done. Uh, six billion was spent by visitors, an all-time high. Hotel visitors grew by 441,000. Lodging spending is up $220 million. 8.6 million passengers moved through that airport, which is, uh, of course, spectacular. And thanks to everyone involved uh, behind the scenes, we continue to work very hard to provide 78,000 jobs to the people in and around the city. We have a master plan going forward. Uh, of course, the Super Bowl wasn't the end of anything. It was the early part of a lot more wonderful things to come. You saw us last week talk about WrestleMania coming in 2014. Of course, we have the NBA All-Star Game coming in 2014. And 2013 is going to have the same plethora of events uh, that we had in past year. So as the spotlight stays on New Orleans, those of us that are standing behind and everyone standing out there has continued to be committed uh, to one of the great economic engines that the city of New Orleans has ever seen. So I thank all of you uh, for the work that you've done. Remember also that lots of other stuff happens around the tourism industry. The Regional Transit Authority uh, has invested $1.3 billion along with other private uh, and public sector folks, not only in the streetcar line, the taxi cab reforms that you see now, 1,300 taxi cabs uh, have finally come into compliance. And now what you begin to see, what you begin to hear, what we all really look for, is folks coming into New Orleans saying, man, when I flew into the airport, it was spectacular. The cabs were great. The service was incredible. And the city looks wonderful. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about because that is what gives us the ability to put so many people to work in the city of New Orleans for such a long period of time. Um, we have great challenges in front of us in this industry that we will confront uh, as a unified group of individuals to speak about the long-term success and needs 
uh, of continuing to do it because this doesn't happen by accident. It has to be well resourced. They have to have strategic plans. We have to keep our shoulder to the wheel and we have to keep pushing product and we have to keep building infrastructure. And we cannot do that uh, without the resources uh, that are necessary to make this happen. And so we'll continue to talk about that with you uh, more. But uh, on behalf of the people of the city, I want to thank all of you who are standing behind me and all of you who are here for all the incredible work that you've done. And let's always remember the back of the house side uh, of what we do and the thousands and thousands of people uh, that are necessary to make this a great success. So uh, God bless you all. Thank you very much. And congratulations. And now, uh, please help me welcome uh, Mr. Steve Perry, who has helped lead this industry uh, in a wonderful way, who will speak to the issues uh, that I, I've just spoken to. Thanks so much, Steve. What's so exciting about this is when you think the second most number of visitors in our city's history came this past year and spent the most money ever in history, $6 billion. That says a lot about not just the travel economy, but it says a lot about the perception of people around the world about New Orleans and where it's going. There's a new imagery coming out of New Orleans now. There's new leadership, there's, there's, there's new visuals. The cultural economy that you've heard discussed so often is the biggest part of the traveler economy, which includes business, leisure, all of the various cultural elements. Well, the reality is for us to have come from where we were just a few years ago to this mark today is an extraordinary accomplishment. And as we go through and look at these numbers, we have to be mindful of a couple of things. One, momentum in our industry means everything. Because momentum reflects the way that people feel about us as a city, about things to do. When people want to come to New Orleans or make a choice about any destination, the kind of things they're thinking about are, are there a lot of things to do? Is it intriguing and interesting? Is it going to, am I going to be safe there? Am I going to have a great time? And this year, one of the things that not only in terms of the two big numbers we've talked about that's important, we had our largest share of first-time visitors. Now, the reason that's so important for us is we've got to build market share over the years with a new generation of travel. That's both young, uh, those who maybe had reached their mid-years who hadn't been here for whatever reason, those of you that hadn't been to New Orleans before, but we're seeing a change now. The fact that right now in the world, traveler, the traveler economy is the most competitive it's ever been. And you guys know this. You think about it, whether it's from a convention and a meeting perspective, or whether it's about trying to be able to host one of these major sporting events, or where you decide to go on the weekend, or where you decide to go on your family vacation. It's, we've never in, in our lifetimes had the number of choices. And for New Orleans to be competitive on a world scale, as the mayor said, is one of the greatest barometers that we could ever have. So we are very, very excited about the progress we're making. There's a list of probably 20 major awards. New Orleans has won in the last year because of the superiority of our restaurants, this cultural economy. Look, we're the cultural mecca of the South. There's no way around it. In every form for the cultural travel. And so this city is not only on a great rising trajectory, but concurrently with it, its travel economy is as well. And we're extremely excited because here, what does it mean? It means that we have more dollars to pay EMS, pay police, to support the issues that the city needs. And I'll tell you, over the next year, you're going to hear more from us. We're going to be standing up and try to help the mayor with the things that he needs to make the city successful, not just our economy successful. Because we're all in this together. And we've got to be there leading the way with the amount of money that we generate for the economy. We've got to make sure that we generate that for the city so we can do the kinds of things that are critical. One of the things the mayor talked about was how well we're all working together. I'll tell you, there's never been a point in time where the mayor's office, the New Orleans Tourism Marketing Corporation, the CBB, and frankly also, Hotel and Lodging Association, Louisiana Restaurant Association, have been as aligned and in sync as they are. And it is, uh, it shows, it shows by these numbers. 
This, the mayor said it best right at the end when he said, today we have to compete fiercely and you have to, we have to have marketing, marketing resources and sales and sales resources. So it's paid off and the unity is paid off. And I can tell you now as I introduce the best partner anybody could have is Mark Romney with New Orleans Tourism Marketing Corporation. What, what they have done in conjunction with us in streamlining resources, we share everything now. We use the same agencies, we develop concepts together, and this is the way it ought to be and it's paying off. So now I'd like to introduce uh, the lead of the president, the CEO of the New Orleans Tourism Marketing Corporation, also recognize the chair, Mr. Berger, thank you for being here. And um, Mark, tell us all the good things you're doing. Daryl, thanks for being here, and Stephen and Mr. Mayor, we really appreciate it. I want to focus uh, some brief comments before we bring up Dr. Williams uh, from the University of New Orleans Hospitality Research Center on how we're approaching New Orleans as far as a destination. We want everyone to know, and we'll be moving this campaign forward beginning at the end of April, and it'll run through September. We want people to come to New Orleans and, and do what the New Orleanians do. We want people to follow their own NOLA. Uh, we're personifying New Orleans with the, the word NOLA, we've heard that often, and we believe through testing that people will really identify with the ability to discover New Orleans on their own terms and to utilize New Orleans as their platform, then to take that message out around the country and share it with their friends and family. We're not a destination, we want people to keep the stories here, we want them to tell those stories and, and get around the, the nation with it, and really create brand ambassadors, and we think last year's numbers show the fact that people really do come to the city of New Orleans and take that message and carry it further out so that their family and friends and uh, relatives come back to the city and explore it the way they do. So we're saying from Magazine Street to Bywater, from Mid-City all the way over to Algiers, people are getting into the city and, and, and enjoying the city like no, uh, no other time before. The spending shows it, working together with the Convention and Business Bureau, taking our few resources that we have, and we certainly need more on the marketing spend to compete more successfully, but because we're being much more efficient with our dollars and our spending, we're able to spread the message out um, even more. I'm working with our, our new marketing partner, Densu America, who's done a tremendous job in helping us think differently and get the message out. We believe that we're going to have an even bigger difference uh, in 2013 and beyond. We want people to help us paint the picture to their friends and family that we are truly the most authentic and most unique destination in all of uh, the Americas and perhaps taking that message worldwide. Um, and uh, Kim Priaz and her team uh, work very closely with the state of Louisiana to take our message, the national message, and move it across the shores and over to, uh, to other nations, and we want to do that on a regular basis. So if you don't mind me waxing a little bit eloquently here, uh, from the shores of Lake Pontchartrain to the banks of the Mississippi River, from the beauty and majesty of city parks, oaks, to the natural habitat and wildlife of Bayou Sauvage, New Orleans has so much to offer. Yes, we are the iconic French Quarter and downtown area, but there's so much to see beyond that. And we're going to be telling that story more and more often uh, beginning at the end of April. Uh, right now, to help us understand the methodology used and how we've uh, derived uh, the numbers that we have presented to you by uh, press release today is uh, Dr. John Williams. He is co-director of the Hospitality Research Center. He's the director of the Cabotoff School of Hotel, Restaurant, and Tourism at the University of New Orleans and uh, currently the interim dean of the School of Business at the University of New Orleans, Dr. Williams. Well, good morning. Um, these figures were pretty amazing this year. Uh, we've watched as we've come back after Katrina, we've gone through the economic depression, and it's, it's been quite an experience. I want to wrap some comments together that were made by the previous speakers and say that we've come a long way. We chose to use a methodology over the past years since Katrina that would look at resiliency. How are we coming back? Are we resilient? Where are we getting? You know that we have a beautiful linear going forward and we still are maintaining it. We've come a long way. Sales are tremendous. We're doing a lot. Thanks to the Convention and Visitor Bureau, the Mayor, and the New Orleans Tourism Marketing Corporation and a combined effort, we're getting the message out. 
I like to speak beyond resiliency because we see trending that has now turned into something else. I believe now it is transformational. We are seeing some changes that have gone beyond what we typically would say. Sure, we had the bedrock created, we had a foundation that came here and was recognized internationally and nationally in that we were perceived and recognized finally as the number one destination for fine dining. We had much more going on, sporting events where we could attract the very finest. Just a lot going on with our restaurants. Hotels this year, 10% increase in the visitors staying in hotels. That's translated over to a 17% increase in spending. So you can see these changes are quite phenomenal. They're actually creating a transformation for the city. If I can bring in some of the methodology and the qualitative and quantitative research we use, I think it's important. We collect open-ended comments from the visitor. We also do a quantitative study. We have 15,613 responses this year. We think we have a great sample size. What we're seeing, and it was echoed in these comments previously, is that visitor, as a consumer, considers us to be unique, exciting, and the number one activity that they want to see as far as the city, each and every year now, is what are the activities that are offered here? What is the range and the breadth of the activity we give? And that has gone up dramatically. So of the 33 activities that we collect, this year for that repeat visitor, who happens to be 59% of all visitors, is frequenting 10 of them as much or more than they did on their initial visit. So subsequent visitors now are finding their way to and going to the National World War II Museum, more than their original visit, the Yonkin Museum. They're going to the Insectarium, the Aquarium, the Zoo. They're going to more parades than they did on their first visit. And they're obviously going to more fine dining and casual dining establishments. Why is that important? If you take, for instance, casual dining, 79% of every visitor on that first visit is in a casual dining operation. And it actually goes up on subsequent visits. This is very, very important. This is a very informed visitor as consumer. They know what we have. They're coming in on an initial visit and finding out we have so much more to offer here. They love the city, it comes out in comments, and they want to be part of the city. It will be incumbent now as we go forward to capitalize on this. We see this growing more. We see the visitation going up in the future. We see the spending going up in the future. We see that need for more activities going up in the future. So it will certainly depend on how we market how we move forward, what we decide to put in and actually spend to grow this tourism to another level. It's very positive, and now it's our turn to see how we capitalize on this. Thank you.